In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to start a weights training program. I'm gonna give you all of the fundamental principles of everything I've learned over my years in the health and fitness industry, as well as my own personal journey. I have literally nothing to sell you, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what the fitness industry will not tell you. Now stick around to the end of this video, guys, because I'm gonna be giving you a free five-day weights training program. This will be a plan over five sessions that hits every single part of your body. You can also make a three-day plan out of, you can make a eight or nine session plan out of if you're really going hard, but it's basically something that absolutely anybody can use. Now this is gonna be the fundamentals, and there are many different ways to skin a cat, so I don't wanna see all of these gym bros in my comments saying, Let's see what your legs look like. Shut your f***ing mouth, go eat some chicken and broccoli and f*** off. We'll start with some of the misconceptions and fallacies of the fitness industry. Now, a lot of the time, fitness professionals will tell you to buy their eight-week program, 12-week program, etc., etc. Now, while these can be very beneficial and you can make pretty significant progress in that time, building a physique takes years. If somebody who's a novice with training comes in and you tell them that they are basically at the bottom of a hill that they will be climbing for the rest of their lives, that person's probably gonna walk out the door. The thing to understand though, and if you take anything from this video, take this. That climb gets easier and eventually it becomes immensely enjoyable. There's no better feeling in the world than seeing the results of your hard work start to come to fruition as you walk out of the gym after a 5 a.m. session and look in the mirror thinking I'm bad mother but this is something that takes blood, sweat, and tears. So if you're not somebody who has the character to commit to something that's long-term, delayed gratification like this, then it's probably best that you turn this video off now, go play some PlayStation and start masturbating. But if you are somebody that wants to become a man of character and a man that lives with integrity and discipline and somebody that wants to wake up in the morning and at the very least look in the mirror and say, I'm having a crack and giving it my best shot, then grab your pen and paper out or your notes on your phone, implement a basic training plan, ideally with a friend, find my email in the bio, send me an email and I will keep you accountable. With anything, it's important to start from the absolute bottom and know that you suck at the start. But as you become physically stronger, your mental strength will improve on a similar trajectory. You will become more resilient, confident, and proud. But for a period of time there, you have to understand that you don't know what you're doing. You're nowhere near the big boys in the gym and that you'll have to seriously swallow your pride and be the bitch for a little while to get where you wanna be. So this is a guide on how to make weights training a part of your life for good and not how to get fit quick. Everybody wants to get fit quickly these days, but unfortunately, that's not really the way it works. And fortunately, there is beauty in the struggle. The blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this journey for you will be what makes you as a man. It will build your character and make you stronger and better in every other aspect of your life. I know this because at one stage in my life, I was fat and depressed. I was 110 kilos. I never used to leave my room. I would sleep all day until 3 or 4 p.m. I would get up and I would play video games all night until the sun rose. I would eat ice cream all night. I would eat toast toasties, smoke cigarettes, and basically do all of the unhealthy things that a young man with zero discipline does. So I've been fat, I've been boxing fit, I've been Ironman fit, and I've been strong and muscular, meaning that I've been through many different training regimes and body transformations. So I understand the results that different training regimes and food consumption patterns have had for me. Furthermore, I am a qualified personal trainer, and I did it for two years. I don't do it anymore, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time and I learned a shitload while I was doing that. So before we get to the weights program, there are a few things to cover off. If you have the means, it's a fantastic investment to see a PT multiple times a week. If you don't have so much money, just once a week is fine. And if you're really broke, try your best to at least book in one or two sessions with a PT just to correct your form because form is extremely important when it comes to building muscle, but also avoiding getting injured. If for whatever reason you can't do any of those things, there are also a lot of tutorials on YouTube surrounding different exercises and the proper form to implement. Never ever hire a fat personal trainer that promotes balance. These people will lead you down the garden path and they'll let you get away with your bad habits so that they don't have to look at themselves in the mirror and admit that they're an out of shape PT. I know this for a fact because I've done this before. There were times when I wasn't in the best shape as a PT and I'd actually feel really uncomfortable trying to keep someone accountable when I couldn't stay accountable myself. What you want to look for is the hardened PTs, the ones who are getting after it day in, day out. You want to look for the PTs that are jacked, that are ripped, that are massive, that are about that life and that are a bit fucking crazy as well. You wouldn't hire a builder if the builder's house that he built for himself was ugly and poorly built. 
So same goes with PTs. The time that you have with them is to train hard and level up, so don't get fooled. Now, there are a few terms that we should understand before we get into weights training. I won't bore you with the finer details and I'll keep this as simple as possible, but the first one is hypertrophy. Hypertrophy refers to the development of your muscles through the growth of muscle fibers. When the muscle tissue is placed under mechanic stress, myogenic stem cell activation occurs, which leads to a repair in the damaged muscle tissue and an increase in the size of the muscle. Hypertrophy training is what you want to do to build an aesthetically attractive body. If you want to learn more about hypertrophy, there's a book called The Science of Hypertrophy by Mike Isratel. It goes into extremely meticulous detail about this more than I wish to divulge. Second term, resistance training. Resistance training is just kind of a fancy term for weightlifting, except you can use your body weights or you can use resistance bands or anything that makes your muscles work against a weight or a force. Third term, progressive overload. This refers to the increasing of the weight, the frequency or the number of repetitions within your weights routine. Essentially, you're gradually increasing the volume of your training in order to become stronger and lift a heavier load. We'll use bench press for an example. So if this week you do three sets of eight reps of 60 and then the next week you do two sets of eight reps of 60 and then one set of 10 reps of 60, you've upped your volume just that little bit. And if you do that every single week, then you'll get slowly stronger, you'll build more muscle and that's what progressive overload refers to. Fourth term is compound exercises. Now compound exercise is an exercise that uses multiple muscle groups at once to perform a movement. There's a slightly blurred line between what is a compound exercise and what isn't, but for the sake of the video, they're squats, bench press, deadlifts, chin-ups, and overhead press. Fifth term is isolation exercise. So isolation exercises are movements that isolate singular muscle groups, such as lateral raises, bicep curls, and crunches. Term number six, supersets. Supersets are when you do two different exercises back to back. This saves you time and also increases your output. In order to achieve meaningful results in the gym, you have to be going at least three times a week. What I'm currently doing is five sessions a week at a moderate to high intensity, and I'm only just able to hit what I need to hit for the week. If I were you and just starting out, whether you're on a weight loss journey or if you're a skinny dude that wants to build some muscle, I'd be going five times a week. It sounds like a lot, I know that, but if you commit to it and you make it a part of your routine, like I said before, it becomes extremely enjoyable. It's scientifically proven that women are most attracted to the V taper body, which means broad shoulders, big chest, and a slim waist. So in order to look like that, gotta train. Now, the next thing that we have to understand is the main muscle groups, which consists of the chest, which is the pectoral muscles, the shoulders, which consist of the deltoids, which is the anterior delt, lateral delts, and posterior or rear delts, your back, which consists of muscles such as lats, scapula, and rhomboids, your arms, which is biceps, triceps, forearms, your abs, and also your lower body, which consists of glutes, hamstrings, quads, and calves. Some people prefer to train different muscle groups on different days, but I would not recommend that. Maybe if you've been training for years and years and you need like an hour to train your chest, which I still don't think is a good idea because the law of diminishing returns would suggest that you'd have a few good exercises and then anything in the second half of the session would just be basically useless. So with that in mind, I'd say the best kind of programming is full body every single session. This way you can get the most out of every different different exercise that you do every day. Now it's best to start off your training session with one of these compound lifts because they're the most fatiguing and it's good to get it out of the way. Now to the training plan. What I would do for the first week is I would be testing out your one RMs. Now your one RM is your one rep max. That's the most weight that you can possibly lift for one rep. If you spend the first week understanding your one rep max for all of the exercises that I'm about to list, then it would give you a really good understanding of what your starting point is and how many reps you should be aiming at for how many sets on what weight. Now in order to get this one RM, what you want to do is you want to start off at a weight that you know that you can lift one rep at or even two or three reps. Let's just use bench press as an example again. If I know that I can lift 40, I'll do five reps of 40 and then I'll wait two minutes and then I'll do a few reps of 50. If that becomes more difficult, you always wait two minutes. I'll wait two minutes again at least and then I'll do 65. If I can only do three of 65, I'll wait another few minutes and then I'll go to 67.5. If I can only do one of 67.5, I've found my one rep max. Disclaimer, Try and have a partner if you're going to do your one rep max. If not, find a trainer at the gym or somebody nearby that can give you a spot. Now, once you've found your one rep max for each exercise, what you want to be doing is taking that number and understanding what 75% of that number is. So because I'm terrible at maths and I'm thinking on the spot, we're going to take bench press as your example. And we're going to say that your one rep max was 60. So if your one rep max is 60, 75% of 60 is 45. So what you want to be aiming at from the next week is to be doing between 6 and 12 reps of 45 kilograms for three to five sets. Most likely in your first week, only three sets. And you can apply this 
to every single exercise. Now, using the principles of progressive overload, what you wanna be doing is upping that a little bit every week. Now let's go through the weekly plan. Just quickly as well, guys, we're gonna go through regression exercises here. So if a certain movement is too advanced for you, I'm gonna name some regression exercises that are super easy that anybody can do. Monday, we're gonna start off with bench press. So if you don't have a partner and if you don't feel comfortable on the bench press, a regression exercise for you can be using dumbbells. So you can just find a bench, lie flat, do some dumbbell bench press. And then we're gonna move into trap bar deadlifts. If you're more advanced and if you prefer to do normal deadlifts, then go for it. I personally prefer trap bar deadlifts. And if you're a beginner, definitely do trap bar deadlifts. So after you've done your three to five sets of that, we're then gonna move on to some triceps and some biceps. Both of the two lifts before were compound lifts, so that should really take it out of you. So you move on to a super set of bicep curls and tricep extensions. Once again, three to five sets, do those exercises back to back. Now Tuesday, we're on to chin up Tuesday here. So start the morning with some chin-ups. If you can't do chin-ups, you can do lat pull-downs. And if you're more advanced and you wanna push yourself a bit more, get a weight belt on or get a chain and do some weighted chin-ups. After your three sets of that, guys, we're gonna go find yourself a squat rack somewhere, grab yourself something to lean on and do some hip thrust. And then we're gonna superset that with upright rows. So you're actually gonna need two barbells for this. It's a little bit annoying logistically, but get it done. If you don't have two barbells, you can use one barbell for the hip thrust and then you can use dumbbells for your upright rows. And if you are really uncomfortable with doing hip thrust, you can also use a hip thrust machine if your gym has one. And more to that, if you're really getting started and you're really a beginner, then you can also get a kettlebell, put it on your pelvis, and you can do glute bridges like that. And to finish off, we're gonna go some leg raises and some resistance band pull downs. More advanced people can hang from the chin up bars and do leg raises. You can even touch your toes up to your hands if you are a bit more advanced. But for the less advanced people, you can literally just lie down on your back and just do regular leg raises. As for the resistance band pull downs, the difficulty of this exercise will depend on the size of the resistance band that you use. So if you're a bit more advanced, use a thicker one. And if you're less advanced, use a thinner one. Wednesday now, we're gonna go overhead press and lunges. For the more advanced people, we're gonna get a squat rack. We're gonna have a barbell, get your weight on the barbell. You're gonna do some overhead press with that weight. And then you're gonna chuck it on your back and you're gonna do lunges. And for the beginners, what you guys can do is you can get some dumbbells and you can do some overhead press. And then you can just hold the dumbbells by your side and do some lunges like that. Next, we're gonna go some pendlay rows and we're gonna do some calf raises. If you can't do the pendlay rows, you can always do single arm dumbbell rows. Finishing up now, you guys are gonna to go to the mats and do some push-ups and planks. If you want to hold the planks for 30 seconds, you can hold them for 30. If you feel like you can hold them for two minutes, hold them for two minutes. On to Thursday now, and we're gonna start with a big session of leg press. This is a relatively newbie friendly exercise, guys. So find the weight that you're comfortable with and smash it out. Next, you're gonna go into a shoulder superset of Arnold press and lateral raises. Lateral raises are one of the most important things you can do, guys. This is what creates the boulder on the side of your shoulder there, which is a really attractive feature makes your arms look a lot nicer and your upper body look a lot more toned. Arnold Press, done by the great man himself. And then to finish off the session, everyone can do these ones, guys. Upwards flies and cable rows. Now, Friday, always save the squats until Friday. So you're walking around limping for the whole weekend. If you haven't quite made it to doing squats with the barbell yet, guys, you can do goblet squats. Goblet squats are just holding the kettlebell on your chest there and doing squats in that way. Next, we're gonna go on to dips and lat pull downs. And if you haven't gotten up to doing dips yet, you can find yourself a bench and do some dips on that. And then hitting those lat pull downs to give you that nice beautiful v taper that will make the ladies go wild and last but not least guys going to finish off that session with plate press and pike push-ups. If you can't do the pike push-ups on the ground, just find yourself a bench and you should be able to do them a little bit easier up higher. Now, I know what you guys are wondering, weightlifting, what about the cardio? Contrary to popular belief with cardio, you don't need to be going for 20K runs every day to burn fat. If you're training for strength and you're eating a balanced diet, then walking places, getting your 10,000 steps every day, taking the stairs and just not being a lazy will be immensely helpful for keeping those extra kilos off. If you wanna take it a bit more seriously, then a few times a week, you should get out for 40 to 60 minutes of moderate cardio. So that's a jog or a cycle. It might be doing boxing. You might play a team sport. All of those things are really helpful. Now, lastly, guys, what you wanna do is be recording your weights every week. So find a way to do that. You can do it in the notes on your phone. There's some good apps as well that you can download where you can put the numbers in, how many sets you did, how many reps you did, and what weight you did, and keep yourself accountable every week. If I were you, I'd be printing it out, putting it up on my wall, it there so I can visualize it every single day and go to the gym knowing exactly what I need to hit for that day so I'm intentional and I'm focused every time I go into the gym. That's it for today, guys. If you like what you saw, then make sure to like and subscribe. Send me an email. My email's in the bio. Any questions that you've got, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for watching Rattlesnake TV, guys. Get informed and get involved.